If you don't know about us, um, we're both letterers. Yeah. Uh, do a bit of type design. Yeah. And um, we're both um, ornamental. Yes. Yeah. For sure. But we have we have our work is actually quite different. A lot of people lump us lump together. us together. They think that we're the same. But I think when you see that when the slides or, start, or going, a lot of people like get angry and accuse you of rip, me of ripping off you, or you know, it's crazy. So um, soon images are going to start rolling. We're not going to talk about those images. Uh, there's some uh, frames that sort of will keep us semi on topic, maybe or maybe not. Yeah. Otherwise, we're just going to talk to each other. We're going to talk about some things that we hope will interest you. So uh, we'll start the the conversation just about education. Um, a little bit of a history of mine. I went to Tyler School of Art, which uh, Paula also went to, and Howard, who was uh, around yesterday, also went to, so yeah. representing hardcore. Yeah. Um, I and was... I I didn't go to school at You didn't all. go to school? Yeah. I was, that was going to be one of the first things I wanted to talk to you about, is like whether or not you felt like art school was a thing that all people should do or I used to think so I, I used to I used to think um, that I really missed out on on not going to school I, I do, and I do still feel um, a bit deprived in terms of the history and I, and I regret not having that part of it the school that I went to was a wonderful school but it wasn't like hyper on the map as much as SVA or RISD and your education is really what you make of it. I mean, yeah. there's there's good teachers at every school and as long as you take advantage of the people that are, not take advantage of them, but you know what I mean? Yeah. As long as you, uh, <laughs> you know, at work with the people that are around you and show your enthusiasm and be, you know, truly present throughout your education, you're going to have a great time. Yeah. I, I mean, I've taught for a while. I, I was teaching uh, introductory typography and but the really good students would uh, not just fill the minimum requirements, they'd be really into it and go and read more stuff or look more things up and come to class and say, hey, I found out this thing. And So then when you think about them sort of leaving school and becoming successful, do you really think that the drive is like 100% of what gets people there? Or? I think the interest... I think, I think, I think, actually, I think that obsession is a really important part of, of, you know, of, of becoming successful in something like this. Because, I mean, who, you know, you can't do it if you don't want to do it. Yeah. And if, uh, you know, if you're in school and you don't want to do it and you, you know, you kind of just like half-ass do your assignments and try and get by, well, how, how is that possibly going to translate into a, into a career? I worked for Louise for a little over two and a half years. Woot. And um, I think I learned 90% of what I know about life from Louise, and, and also in terms of like things that are good to eat and all that <laughs> kind of stuff. So Louise, I mean, I think my whole career has been about mentors and mentorship. And um, even when I was in college, the, the professors that I had really, you know, they went above and beyond to give me extra assignments. And, and you know, if, if you seemed enthusiastic, they really paid attention and gave you extra work and stayed all the extra hours. And then my very first job out of school, where I was full-time freelancing um, at a studio called Headcase Design in Philly, that was a similar thing where they sort of didn't know the rules of what it was like to have an intern or have like a junior there. So mm -hmm. I got to experience things in a much more sort of like hands-on way. I get people asking me quite often, you know, who was my mentor? And I feel very sad that I, that I didn't have a mentor. I kind of had to kind of had to figure it all out myself and, and struggle through it myself. And but I think mentors come in all roles, though, too. I mean, it doesn't, you don't need a mentor that you work under. Or you don't need a mentor that it does what you do. But there's always someone in your life that you're like, you know what? They're doing this right. I still didn't have that. No? No. <laughs> it was all by myself. Nice. Totally self-taught. Even more impressive than... No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wish I had that. But... Um, um, I worked for myself uh, as you know, in, you know, as a graphic designer, uh, which I think in many ways was really a stupid thing to do. Um, so I didn't even have that working under somebody else kind of experience. This first slide, I just showed a thing from Brooklyn because I still miss it, and I feel like a lot of my like our inspirations are probably we have a lot of overlap in terms of the the things in history that we think are awesome and amazing. Yep. But I think so much of my inspiration just comes from environments and being surrounded by, you know, people that have the right energy that make me enthusiastic to do work. 
Well, I've got, a, I've got a bit of a pet peeve about the, about the word inspiration in that the vast majority of the time I think it's used wrong. So people, that's a very, a very common question very common that I question. get. You know, what is your inspiration? And I always say, um, you know, an inspiration is a, is a moment, uh, usually a moment of surprise, and it's a, it's a spark, and it's something that can come from anywhere. I always say it can come from anywhere, anything, anytime. So, you know, I can look at an audience like this and I can see a color pattern that would Will inspire me, or and it and it's really just like you know, like wow, you know what a it it, it triggers something in my brain, yeah. Um, and that you know you really can't predict that. And I think what most people mean when um, well, there's two there's two things that people mean when they when they ask that inspiration question. What they really mean is what are your um, uh, uh, influences. Yeah. Which is which is different. It's the things that you absorb as you go that eventually they turn up in your work, but they're not something that's that kind of, you know, immediate moment. And they also mean what is your resource material, which is yeah. an entirely different thing. Entirely altogether. different thing. Yeah, and I think too, um, you know, in terms of influences too, I, I think the reason why people do ask is that they want it, they're like, I want to look at the stuff that you look at so that I can make the stuff too. Right. You know? And I think that, you know, in, in our position and in a lot of the designers here position, you know, we get asked all the time about people treading too close, you know, to oh. your work or anything like that. And we're on the process now. And I think the client, the client interaction thing is totally part of the process, of course. Yeah. You know, in general, you know, people ask me a lot, you know, well, what do you do to get work? Do people just come to you? La, la, la. We do something so specific for a living that when people are like, hey, who does girly lettering? And they're like... <laughs> You know, and they just, yeah, they just think of, yeah, I'm certainly in the girlier zone than you are, but, um, but yeah, it just gets to be a point where you, like, you end up being the person that people think of just because, I mean, if you guys have a bunch of non-art friends, you are the artist to them. So, I mean, my mom and, and my aunts are the same way, like, I'm still promised to paint like a dolphin on my Aunt Nancy's garage door <laughs> ever since I was like 18 years old because I'm the artist in the family. Right. Um, so I think it works like that within the design community, but just in a more specific way. Like if you're the only web designer in a group of print design friends, you are getting a shit ton of work because all of your print design friends are like, I don't know who to recommend. What about you? You sometimes make websites. Yeah. And I think that it ends up like that with lettering too, you know? I didn't know I was gonna get into design in general. I just, I loved art and I loved making things. And I think that, I mean, I'm sure that you experienced this with lettering is that there's, there's parts of the process that you just feel like your brain is off for sometimes, you know? Yeah. People hire you and they're like, draw a butterfly out of swashes. And you're like, cool. Do you want to talk about ladyhood? You get that question, like, what's it like to be a woman in graphic design? Yeah, all the time. I mean, there's so many women that are in grad school writing these theses about being a woman in design, and they need to ask you these big questions all the time about being a woman in design. Yeah. And I feel, I like get so bored at people's, like, philosophical theses <laughs> that I'm just like, can't we just, just go out and make work? Like, do we need to talk about my womanhood all the time? Like, I think that it's, it's not productive to talk about. I think it actually, like, makes the sexism more intense. Well, do you think there is sexism? I don't think, I think that there isn't at all. For, I mean, I haven't experienced any. If anything, yeah, I I've, haven't either. If anything, I've experienced, like, just total encouragement. Right. Because everyone's like, yes, more women come yeah, to the stage, yeah. you know? Um, but what I do think is that I think because there's so few ladies sort of in very prominent public speakery kind of positions, um, I've had a bunch of women, especially within the web community, because there's just hard, there's not a lot of women on the speaking circuit in web. They get the main issue that they have is that a lot of people complain that they've just seen them over and over again. Right. So the, they'll get this feedback that's like, oh, I'm seeing this person again. Right. You know? Yeah. So I think that the, it's not hard to become successful. It's hard to maintain success. Right. Because people get, like, feel sort of old hat about you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but cool. Uh, so that was us having a talk. <laughs> <laughs>